we did uh, this part right the arithmetic function we define what is the dirichlet function right mm. so dirichlet function is defined that if we have two arithmetic functions uh, f and g uh, then we define uh, this dirichlet product of this to be like this so it is uh, summation over all d divides n f of d times uh, g of n by d uh, where uh, we are finding h of n right mm. okay. so that is yes the notation is we will write uh, f star d so that is the notation so the next theorem is uh, based on that so it says uh, that dirichlet multiplication Mm -hmm. So, digital multiplication is uh, commutative and associative. So, what does it mean? So, commutative means if I have f star g, that should be g star, that is equals to g star f, and associative is. F star G star K that is equals to F star of G star K. Mm -hmm. So this is commutative and this is associative. So this you have to prove from the definition of the uh, thing, this rate function, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now the thing is, uh, by definition, what do you know? So if I find uh, f star g of some n, that is nothing but summation of our uh, d divides n, uh, f of d, uh, g of n by d, right? Mm. So this uh, thing I can rewrite like this, right? So it is summation over all a times b that is equals to n uh, f a times g b right so where this a and b vary over all mm. uh, positive uh, divide integers mm. Uh, such that their product is n. Right? Mm -hmm. So this, but this I can again change like this. Right? So this is same as a times b, uh, g of a and f of b. That is same, right? Because it varies over all a and b. Mm -hmm. So from here I can directly get the d divides n. So it will be g of d. And f of n by two. Okay. Mm. So this is fine, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about the associative thing? So the associative thing is uh, so we define uh, our new function a to b g star k. Mm. So then what I have is uh, f star of g star k is nothing but uh, f star of a, right? Mm. Now, f star of g star k n is nothing but f star a of n. Now by the same property means by the definition. I can write a times d equals to m, f of a, a of d, right? Mm. Yeah. So now similarly a, uh, a of d we can further write it as a summation. So this is f of a, then summation suppose b times c equals to d, g of b, and k of c right mm. but this is nothing but summation of a times b times c equals to n f of a 
d of b and k of c so you can rearrange like this right it will lose mm. right yeah now similarly if i start with the other direction so if i start with f star of g uh, star k then we can uh, come into the same conclusion right it is for a product of c times equals to n f of a g of b k of c similarly we can do it mm. so this implies this these two things are equal so this is again so f star g uh, star k is same as f star g star k so the dirichlet product is uh, both commutative and associative mm. right yeah, yeah. Okay. so next we define so next we define an, an arithmetic function i as follows the arithmetic function i given by i of n that is uh, okay, right. so this is box of 1 by n that is it is 1 uh, if uh, n equals to 1 and it is 0 if n is greater than 1 right mm. so this is the identity function Okay, so it is at one, it is only one, and other thing it is zero. Mm. Uh, identity Vincent. Uh. Right. So the definition is clear, right? Mm. Okay. So the next theorem is based on this. So it says that for all function so for all f we have this identity function if i uh, find the Dirichlet product with f that is same with the uh, because it is commutative but that is finally same with f so if i uh, find the Dirichlet product of a f and i that is f. so it actually behaves like a identity function uh, in the Dirichlet product sense okay Mm. So, mm. if I use the definition, right, so this is nothing but summation d divides n, uh, f of d, and i of n by d, right? Mm. But i of n by d, uh, sorry, d, uh, yes, n by d, that is fine. Mm. But what is uh, i of n by d by definition? 1 over n. Uh. Uh, one over n so it is uh, it is box of d by n right mm. right yeah, yeah. So it is box of d over, d over n but if d is uh, strictly less than n right mm. so the thing is box over d by n right so if d is uh, this is always zero if d is strictly less than n right mm. And it is one only if d is equals to n. Other things will be to become all zero, right? Mm. So in the in this summation, only the term that will survive is f of n. Right? All other terms will be zero, right? Mm. Okay. Why um on. Only one term E1 is right. Right, only one term will be there, right? Because it is f of n, right? Because other things, if d is less than n, it will become zero. Right? Uh, it's the f n. Uh, okay. F right. n. Mm. But uh, f m, by definition, should be uh, uh, f n. Fine. Mm -mm. Yeah. Right.
okay so the thing is uh, this multiplication we got uh, for this dirichlet multiplication we got what is an identity function so the natural next thing is what is the inverse right mm. so that comes to the next section so so that is the dirichlet inverses and the mobius inversion formula okay so the theorem is okay so the thing is if uh, if and so if f is an arithmetic function so if f is an arithmetic function with uh, f of 1 not equals to 0 then there is a unique uh, arithmetic function Uh, denoted by f inverse called the dirichlet inverse inverse of uh, such that so it satisfies this following property so if i find the dirichlet product with inverse that is same with this thing and we get the identity Right. Mm. This statement is fine. The way if it is um, the with F one hmm. not equal to zero. Right. Okay, uh, you need Uh, uh, why we why we need the condition f1 is not equal to zero yes that is uh, that is needed because otherwise uh, yes because that is the condition we have with the identity function right so when i convolute with identity function i get f of n right so that is the property of the identity function right but here uh, if i of 1 i of 1 is uh, 1 right other things it is all zero right mm. right so when i compute uh, here if when i evaluate at 1 so then it should be equals to 1 right so if f of 1 it becomes zero then it is uh, then this part is zero right so this equality will not happen right? mm. So that's why i equals to i uh, f of 1 not equals to 0 that is required. Mm. Mm. Fine? Mm. Yeah. All right. So moreover, we can say something more. So moreover. Uh, f inverse, so you can give by is given by by the recursion formula that is f inverse of one. We will define it is one over f of one and f inverse of n we will define like this minus 1 over f of 1 summation d divides n and d is strictly less than n f of n by d f inverse of d for n greater than 1 so this is the definition of the f inverse function mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
thì làm mất chiếc xăng vàng lớn chỉ để vào co tiền của sòng bạc để trộm vàng F invert up N equal to minus 1 of F1. Right. F1 not Fn is right. This is F1. This is F1. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So let us see how to prove this one. So the thing is, uh, so given f, uh, we shall show that. This uh, the equation. If inverse of n, so this is actually equals to i of n. So if I can show that, then we are done, right? So this has a unique solution. Mm. Unique solution. Uh, for the functional values, f inverse of n. Okay. So we'll see for each one how it is working. So first is n equals to 1. So n equals to 1, we know that f star f inverse of 1. Uh, so this is i of 1, right? So this reduces, if and only, f of 1 times uh, f, of f inverse of 1 is equals to 1. Now uh, since uh, f of 1 is not equals to 0, uh, we can write uh, f inverse of 1 is 1 by f of 1, right? Mm. So this is only one, one solution, right? So it is true for n equals to 1, right? Mm. So this is a unique solution. So this is true for n equals to 1, right? Right. Yeah, it's okay. right. Now we assume that it is uh, true for all n less than k and then proof for uh, that. Right. So assume that. The, the function values. If inverse of k has been have been uniquely defined defined determined. For all k less than n. So then uh, we solve the equation. Uh, for the next one and now we prove for uh, k equals to n what is happening mm. so then, solve the equation right so then what is happening? I open it using the definition. So this is nothing but d divides n, f of n by d, mm. f inverse of d that we can use by the commutative property. So that is uh, equals to 0, right? Because n is greater than 1. So i of n is 0, right? In that case. i of n. Right. So n is greater than 1, right? So that uh, the right hand side, it will be 0, right? Because i of n is 0. And this part I opened using the definition. Okay. Mm. Mm. So then uh, what we can do is so we separate the thing into the this summation is separate into two parts. The first part is if I take d equals to one, so it will become uh, d equals to n. We have to say I am taking, so it will become f of one times f inverse of n plus. 
lead wires in and all the stick layers in it. Right. right. This part, uh, this step is clear. What I'm doing. Step one. Right. The... So, so here D divides n. So D is all divisors of n, right? So particularly mm -hmm. D equals to n also satisfies, right? Yeah, we separate yeah. that out. So mm. this part is for D equals to n. I mm -hmm. break into two parts. One is D equals to n, other thing is D. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now the thing is I so f of one. Uh, so thing is f of one. If inverse of n, that is nothing but I take the other summation to the other set minus d divides n d less than n. If inverse of d, right? F uh, one. F minus d. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. All right. So now by the induction, uh, that we know that all the values of f, f inverse of d I know up to n, right? That is what we assume. So we know the function values have been uniquely determined for all k strictly less than n, right? So for all d strictly less than n, I know the value. So this part I can ev evaluate, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, since the values f inverse of d uh, are known uh, for all divisors. Uh, D is strictly less than right. So, so now what I can do is from here, uh, f inverse of n is nothing but minus one over f of one summation d divides n d less than n f of n by d f inverse of d right mm. so this thing is uniquely determined so i find uh, i find the value of f inverse of n uniquely i can uniquely determine the f inverse also I can uh, I can divide by f of one because this f of one is not equals to zero. So here also the assumption is required. Mm -hmm. So this uh, so now by induction for every value of n, this f inverse of n is uniquely determined. Mm -hmm. So this establishes uh, the existence and uniqueness of f inverse. Mm -hmm. Okay. This mm -hmm. proof is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what the thing is? The inverse we define. So naturally, what we have is so if I have the product. Suppose the Dirichlet product. And if I take the whole inverse, that is nothing but f inverse d register product to g inverse. So this is fine, right? So this is only true if f of 1 is not equals to 0 and g of 1 is also not equals to 0 because otherwise inverse is not defined. Right? Mm -hmm. So this directly follows from the previous theorem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Sorry. So next we define. So we define the unit function. U to be the arithmetic function. So as the U of n is one for all. Okay. 
cái loa phường của xóm bây giờ đã hết tác dụng đúng là cái việc là So that is our unit function. This is not this is different from the identity function. So this is the unit function. So it is uh, one for all values of n. But the identity function is only one at n equals to one. Other places it is zero. Right? Mm. Okay. So then what happens is, uh, if you remember. Uh, uh, That one theorem we did about mu. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, one minute. That is, I think, yes. This is a mu function we did one theorem. Yes. So this function we did, right? That uh, summation of uh, summation of mu d. Where d divides n, this is this thing, right? But now this is nothing but we define this is our identity function, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is our identity function. So. Yes. So this definition is clear. So from the previous theorem or that, that some theorem number I am not I not sure. So what I know is d divides n mu of d. That is nothing but i of n, our identity function. Right? Mm. But uh, the thing is, uh, how do you write uh, in the notion of the Dirichlet, uh, the Dirichlet, uh, Dirichlet product? So the thing is, uh, what you can do is, if I write mu tar u, this u is our unit function. Uh, then that is equals to i, right? So this is the Mobius function. Mobius mu function. Right, and this is the unit function. So can you write like this? From here to here, can you say? <laughs> right, because uh, the thing is by the Dirichlet product, uh, it should be this, and u times d by n by d, right? Mm. But since it is one, it will become one, so that is fine, right? Mm. So, hence, this mu function and u uh, are Dirichlet inverses. Mm. Of each other. Fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Right. So this gives us the uh, Mobius inversion formula. So that is the next thing. It is called the. Mobius inversion formula. Hmm. Okay, so let us see what is the statement. So the equation. F of n equals to d divides in g of n implies that g of n equals to d divides in f of d mu of n by d. Mm. So if I have, so this is both ways. So if I have any arithmetic function like that, I which I can write in terms of g of another function g. Then I can invert the function. I can send g to the other side and it and express that in terms of f. The only the extra thing is it is mu times n by. F n. Can you tell how to do it? This is not difficult. It is. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, I... Invert formula uh, the equation Fn Zn right 
zn equal to pam pam the uh, ah, okay the Hey, now what the? Hey. Ah, the the first of all, the, the equation. What does it mean? F n equal to. Uh... Uh, yes, yes. So suppose uh, I have one equation. F n equals to summation of g n, right? Summation of d divided n g n, right? So what I am doing? I am right. I am finding each for each n. Is n is f prime. N is n. Uh, n. N is n. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, so not this. This is D, D. G of D. D divided N. Mm. N is a function J. Yes, N is N. Yes. Mm. Mm. So this N belongs to this natural number, right? So this is the, we are defining on arithmetic functions are defined mm. on natural numbers, right? Let's uh, just uh, give an uh, an, an S. It's in like that, it's right. Right, right. We just give an fn like that. So I am writing fn in terms of g, another function g, right? Then mm. I can just invert our function. I can write uh, then g in terms of it. G I can write in terms of it using this Mobius function. Uh, 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 uh. And uh, how is the uh, e equivalent of this? It's right. Yes, how is this equivalent? Yes. Uh, uh, uh. The N. The N. The Okay. Uh, how is Ever one? It it copy copy let us see it. Oh, so if I start with this thing, so f is equals to d divides n g of t. So that is does not uh, that just means that f is uh, g star u right, where u is the unit function. Right. Uh. Right. Now, what I can do is say, I know that unit function u is invertible, right? So what I can do is, f star u inverse, that is g, right? u equal to 1, but u invert is what? No, I'm saying this unit function is invertible, right? Uh, I can multiply both sides by the unit inverse, right? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, what we saw uh, just now that uh, this u and mu, these two things are the uh, inverse, inverse of each other. Ah, uh, 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 inverse of u is a mu. Right. So this is mu equals to g. Right. So from here I get that g is equals to f star of mu. That is nothing but d divides n f of d mu of n by d. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Mio and Gio is uh, in but it's other. Uh, All right. Mm. Fine. Hmm. So this is uh, fine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now well, let us uh, see some application. Then we'll come back to again the theorems. Okay. So the question is, uh, find all integers. Find all integers n such that. 
this uh, phi of n so phi definition you remember right so phi of n is equals to n by 2 so what are all integers such that phi of n is actually equals to n by 2 phi of integer n is not yes phi n phi n uh, why is n equal to um, uh, relative prime is right phi of n yes phi of n is the number of uh, the number numbers. of uh, relative prime of n yes, yes that is less than n then, uh, uh, so uh, phi on n, which right. uh, the number of uh, relative from lit uh, equal to n uh, over two. Okay. So let us uh, see some uh, small examples if we can see something. So if you remember. Uh, so we did some small table, right? So where is that? Yes. So from here, uh, can we say that for which n it is n by 2? The number 2, yeah, 1, 2, 4. Yes, 4 is n by 2. Yes, anything else? 2, 4, uh, 8. Right. 5. Yes. So other things are not. Yes. So now from here, can we uh, tell it for which values of n it is n by 2? So from the uh, table, what we got is that p of 2 is one p of four is two and p of eight is four so let us similarly calculate uh, what is p of 16 mm, I... uh, yes uh, mm. from here uh, yes for any any other number so what is get is if n equals to some two power of two power n k right then i get uh, that phi of n is uh, n by 2. But we have to prove that, right? In general, we have to prove it. So, uh, how to prove that? Maybe induction. So, uh, induction. No, I think we know that. Uh, no, 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 because the, we don't have uh, the All values of continuous uh, second. Yes, yes, but we know, the, so we know the properties of uh, phi, right? So, one. Just, uh, so, where is that? One minute. Let me search. P of n, right? So P of n here we defined, then here yes, this one. So this one we have, right? So if uh, uh, it is a prime uh, power, then uh, I can write like this, right? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the property we'll use it. So 2 is a prime, so we'll use that. So, so P of 2 power of s is nothing but 2 power of s minus 2 power of s minus 1, right? Mm. So it is uh, 2 power of s minus 1, right? Mm. So that is nothing but uh, 2 power of s divided by 2. Mm. So from here I get that p of n equals to n by 2 when n equals to 2 power of s. So that is fine. But the thing is for any other type of integers, it will uh, not be n by 2. How will you make sure that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's on or not? Yeah. Yes, the thing is, uh, for these uh, things, I know that is it is n by 2. What about the remaining integers? Mm. Yeah, yeah. We should uh, prove it's not. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, either we have to prove that it is not, uh, or the, mm. otherwise you have to show that whether it is true or not. Ah.
So if the number is not of the from, uh, so, so suppose n equal to two power s. Right, so it is not then uh, n equals to two power s uh, some d right mm. uh, where d is odd. D is odd number right. Mm. Today might be update only around the shops. And now my yeah. has fallen right. off. But now, P of N, I know by the product rule, it is 2 power of S times P of D. Right? Uh. But 2 power of S just we have calculated. So it's 2 power of S minus 1 times P of D. Right? Mm. Okay. And suppose it is equals to N by 2. Right? Mm. So now, uh, what is n? So n is again we can substitute. Okay, let me write now. Right. So then what I have is two power of s minus one p of d n is two power of s times d, right? And divided by two. So this is two power of s minus one times d. Mm -hmm. So if I cancel, so p of d has to be equals to d. Right? Mm. So for which values of d, uh, which is odd, this p of d is equals to d? Just uh, one. Right, only one. So other than one, uh, we we don't have right because uh, the maximum value of d uh, is uh, for any this is less than equals to d minus one. So for if d is strictly greater than one, it is less than. So this is only possible. Uh, if uh, d is equals to 1. Right? So that's why uh, this is only d is equals to 1. Therefore, n has to be this. Other than that, we have any other. Right? Mm. Please find it. Yeah, it's okay. Right. So next part is. So same thing, same question for find all integers the such that phi of n is equal to phi of 2n. Phi mm. 2n equal to phi 2 multiply with phi n. Okay. Phi 2 equal to what? Phi 2 equal to. No, that, that we cannot say, right? Because n can have uh, some product of. Uh, multiple of two, right? So previously that we can say because I, I, I just mean uh, phi two uh, n equal to phi two multiply with phi n. No, no, that we cannot say. That we cannot say because n uh, n can be even, right? Uh, n can be even, right? So that we cannot say. Ah, uh, we we can uh, you practice with. Uh, with the condition of uh, distinct uh, prime. Yes, distinct prime, because n can have a factor of 2 also, that we don't know. Hmm. Ah, what is so we can use the product? Mm, yes. Or not? Uh, how to use that? Because, so that's why we will uh, do the same thing. So suppose n equals to some 2 power s times d, right? where d is odd. So I have taken out all the factor of 2 from n outside, right? Uh. right? Uh. So now, uh, suppose if s equals to 0, that is uh, n is not divisible by 2, right? Then what is phi of n? So that is phi of d, right? Uh. And phi of 2n, that is now I can write it as phi of 2 times phi of n, right? Because now there is only one prime factor, right? Uh. But phi of 2 is 1, right? So this is phi of, sorry, uh, is. 
Free, free of one equal to one. Free of two. Free of two equal to one. Uh, yes, free of two is also one. So that is, uh, I can write it uh, only free of B, right? So in this case, they are matching. So in this case, free of N is equals to free of one. Right? Mm. So this is fine. Now suppose we have the other case. The race is strictly greater than zero. Yes, is strictly greater than zero. That is, you have uh, it has more than uh, so it has multiple of two, right? Mm. So then, uh, what is p of n? P of n is p of two power of s times p of t, right? Mm. But this I know is two power of s minus one, right? Okay. Mm. But on the other hand, p of two n is phi of 2 power of s plus 1 mm. times phi of t. But this is phi of t, right? Mm. So that is not possible, right? So this is not equal, right? Yeah. So it is only possible when uh, s is equals to 0. That is... So thus... Uh, phi of n is equals to phi of 2n uh, if and only if n is odd. Right? It equal to odd. Uh. Because, uh, uh, because only it is possible when a is equals to 0. a is equals to 0 means there is no factor of 2. Uh, 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 uh. Right? But uh, it's okay. But uh, we. N he out and what's uh, L if N is uh, even? Yes, that is all right. If N is even, uh, then S, must, uh, S has to be greater than 0, right? Uh, but in uh, that case, these two things are not equal. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. N equal to 2 power 8. Multiply with the that's the that's the odd number uh, not odd number depends on uh, s yes it depends on s if s is zero then it is odd uh, if it is so that's the on of n is right n yes. equal to uh, two eight multiply multiply with d that's the yes. on of uh, n yes that is the full n yes up in. Ah. Yes. Ah, okay. So, for example, we can see one example. So, suppose you have uh, 35, right? Ah. So, if you have uh, n equals to 35, then what is phi of 35? Mm. So, that is the uh, definition we can apply, right? So, it is 35 times 1 minus 1 by 5 times 1 minus 1 by 7, right? Mm. How much? Uh, four. Four, five. 20, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, if you take uh, 70, that is 2 times of this thing, that will also come 20. That you can check. Right? So, yes. So, there are only two cases, right? So either uh, S is strictly greater than 0 or it is strictly greater than 0. So if it is strictly greater than 0, I showed that it is not equal. And if it is 0, they are equal, right? Uh, and S equals to 0 implies N is odd because there is no factor of 2. Mm. Okay. Mm. This is fine, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we we can stop here. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Thank you.